All right, so we've been talking about distributive property, and so let's look at just uh, a few examples here. And one way we can use distributive property is to uh, make mental math easier. So let's say that we've got an expression uh, like this. We've got 20 times 31. Okay, now here's the reality of it. You're probably going to just take that and enter it into a calculator, uh, 20 times 31, and of course 20 times 31 is just going to equal 620. But that's not the purpose of this lesson, what we're doing here. We're trying to see how we could use the distributive property to make mental math easier. So if I'm going to do that, then I could actually take this 20 times 31, and the distributive property would allow me to say, okay, well, that's the same as 20 times 30 plus 20 times 1, All right? And then I can go, well, 20 times 30, I can pretty much do that in my head. Uh, 2 times 36, I've got two zeros, and so that's 600. And 1 plus 20, of course, that's real easy. That's just 20. And I can evaluate this as 620. How about it? Okay, well, let's look at another one, maybe a little bit more complicated. How about we see something like this? We've got 12 times 4 and a half. Hmm. That's not as easy to do in our head, not even as easy to do in our, on our calculator if we mess this up. Converting any kind of fraction, one half might not be too bad, but if it's a different type of fraction, we might um, have a hard time entering it. And so I could do this, I could, using the distributive property, I could evaluate this expression by saying, well, that's the same as 12 times 4 plus 12 times 1 half. All right. Well, 12 times 4, we should be able to do that from memorizing our times tables. Hopefully, you have that done. So 12 times 4 is 48. And let's see, 12 times 1 half. Well, that's the same thing as taking 12 and dividing it by 2. So 12 times 1 half is 6. And now I got 48 plus 6, which is 54. And I bet if you put 12 times 4 and a half in a calculator, you're going to get 54. Now, another thing that we'll use the distributive property for, and we'll do this a lot, is to uh, evaluate algebraic expressions, and then just a little later on, we'll be using it quite a bit when we are uh, into equations, which I think is actually the next chapter section. So let's look at a couple of examples here, then if I am going to use the distributive property to evaluate an algebraic expression. So I've got this expression here, 5 times 4x minus 9. Now, there's a couple of ways that you could go about doing this. Uh, I could rewrite this to where I would say that this is the same as 5 times 4x plus... 5 times minus 9. This would be one way. So I got uh, 5 times 4x. Well, that's going to be 20x plus 5 times minus 9, which is minus 45. And, of course, I got a plus and a minus. That's just going to make that a minus. And let's just finish this off with 20x minus 45. Okay? Now, here's more of what I do. I know I'm going to distribute this against both these terms. Now, I have, to, I have to think of these. These are two separate terms. A 4x is one term because uh, it's a, it, ha, it has a variable with a coefficient. We call that, that 4 is actually the name for that, is a coefficient. And I've got this constant out here, what I would call a constant, which is minus 9. So I have two terms inside that parentheses. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to do this. I'm going to multiply this 5 times this 4x, and then I'm going to multiply this 5 or distribute. We could call that, we need to probably say distribute rather than multiply, but multiply is the operation I'm doing. 5 times minus 9. 
So if I go 5 times 4x, well, 5 times 4x is 20x. And 5 times minus 9 is minus 45. Hey, and I am done. Now, let's take a look at maybe one more. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, well, this one's just a little bit more complicated here. Let's say I've got an expression. Let's write this in a different color. Let's say I got a, a, an expression, 12, that's a 1, big 1, thick 1, 12 times 6 minus 1 half x. Okay. Now, if I'm going to break this down, let's go this way, and we'll do it like this. This is the same as 12 times 6 plus... 12 times minus one half x. Okay, so remember, I got two, I got two separate terms here. I've got a six, which is a constant, and I got this minus one half x. I got two different terms I'm looking at inside these parentheses. Uh, and so let's go here. 12 times six. I see. I think uh, that is 72. And then plus, okay, so I got 12 times minus one half x, or that's the same as saying 12 divided by minus 2x, which then would give me, or minus 2 times x, which would give me minus 6x, okay? And as I finish this off, this plus and a minus is going to leave me there with 72 minus 6x using the distributive property. Again, I can come at it this way. I can go right here. I can go 12 times 6 is 72. 12 times 1 half x is minus 6x. And guess what? I'm done. Now, one of the big things that we'll be doing in math is something called combining like terms. And so let's kind of take a look uh, first at um, different terms or combining like terms. But we'll also be using the distributive property uh, to illustrate this as well. So let's say we got an expression here. So I've got 2 times 3x plus 2y minus Z. I'm going to put a little line through that Z so I make sure that I know it's not a 2. All right, now, inside this parentheses, here's our question. How many like terms do we have? Well, that's a term. 3X, that's a term. And 2Y, well, that's a second term. And this Z sitting out here is a third term. So I've got three different terms inside that parentheses. I don't have any inside that parentheses that are actually like terms. They're all different. If anything with an X and a Y and a Z, um, those are unlike terms. But I can still use the distributive property to simplify this. And I can do that. I can say, okay, well, 2 times 3X uh, is uh, 6X. And 2 times 2Y or plus 2Y is 4y, and 2 times minus z, well, that's just going to be minus 2z. And I have distributed this 2 against all of these three different terms in that expression inside the parentheses. Uh, let's take a look at uh, one more right quick. Let's look at this one right here. Let's say I've got an expression, and this expression is parentheses, 2 minus 3x plus x squared and times 3, or I'm going to distribute the 3 to all three of these terms because I actually do have three separate terms in the, inside this parentheses. This 2 right here is what we would call a constant. It doesn't have a variable associated with it. That's a constant. I've got the minus 3x right here. Well, that's the second term. And even though this x squared has an x in it, it is not the same. It is not a like term with a 3x because really what x is is x times x. Okay? 
That's x squared. x squared is x times x. So it's it's not a like term with x squared. Those are two separate terms. So again, I've got three different terms inside these parentheses. So I take this and I go three times two. I'm going to distribute the three times the two. That's going to give me six. Three times minus three x is going to give me minus nine x. And three times x squared is going to give me three x squared and I have evaluated this expression in its simplest form and we don't need that parentheses out there let's get rid of that okay well not bad all right now I want to stay on this combining like terms for a minute let's look at a couple of actually what would be really simple ones let's say that we've got an expression like this 3x plus 6x. Well, here I've got an expression and I've got two like terms. Both of these have x's in it. And if I'm going to simplify that, well, I can just simply add that together. 3x plus 6x equals 9x. Okay. How about it? Uh, how about this one? We've got something like this. Let's say we've got 20a plus 12a minus 8. And I'm asked to simplify this. Well, now how many like terms do I have? Well, I have two like terms. I've got 20a and 12a. Well, those are like terms. And then I've got this minus 8 sitting out here. Well, that's a constant. That's, that's not a like term with the 20a and the 12a. But I can still simplify this because I can combine the like terms of 20a and 12a, and I get 32a. That's a bad looking a. Minus 8, and I have simplified that. I am done. All right, let's see. And I can uh, let's look at one more right quick. I want to check on something here first. Yeah, okay. Um, How about something like this? Let's say I've got 10 XY minus four XY plus X. Now in this total expression, how many different, how many like terms do I have? Um, well, I've got this, I've got a 10xy here, and I've got an xy here, and then I just got an x. And I'm going to distribute this minus 4 against this xy and this x. But looking at that expression right there, I'm going to say that I've got two like terms. I've got two, I've got an xy term, and I've got an x term. So let's look to uh, simplify this one. So I've got 10xy. I'm going to leave it right there for a while because I'm first going to distribute this minus 4. That's uh, so minus 4 times minus 4 times the xy is minus 4xy, and minus 4 times x is minus 4x. Okay, now I can combine these two like terms, the 10xy and the 4xy. So I've got 10xy minus 4xy, so that's going to give me 6xy minus 4x. Hey, and I have done it. All right, we're going to look at one more real quick. Let's say we got 4x squared plus 3x squared plus 2x. So now again, think about, and I want to ask, how many like terms? What are my like terms in here? Well, my like terms are, I've got an x squared and an x squared. So those two are like terms. But this x here by itself is not a like term with those x squareds. So I want to go back in here and simplify this thing. So I've got 4x squared plus 3x squared. Well, that's going to give me 7x squared. And then I've got my plus 2x. And I am done.